big question that's been coming up is who is the real Jesus? And today on Channeling Spirit Fridays, we are going to be channeling Jesus Christ, also known by his original name, Yeshua. And there's been a number of questions that have come through about him. And there's been a lot of discrepancies about who the real Jesus is. And that is something that we want to clear up today. So we definitely want to answer and ask any questions that you might have for yourself, for Jesus, for anyone else. And, and let's just channel and see what it is. Where we want to start out first is a really interesting question that came through, or, or more of an opinion that was posted on the wall previous to, and this is from Just Yeet, Yeet It, uh, says, I recently became saved by Jesus, and I do not know that prophecy and psychic work is an abomination, and I do know that prophecy and psychic work is an abomination to God. Please read the Bible, and he saved me from witchcraft, and he can save anyone. Okay, so let's talk about this. What do you want to say about it? Jeez, I, I'm, I'm going to get it myself out of the way. Let's just let uh, the master talk about this. For those of you that have been saved and been told that mediumship, psychic work, is witchcraft and devil's work, who do you think told you that? What do you think that I did? What do you think you do when you go into prayer? We've been taught to go into prayer in groups. You are going within. When you go within, you are connecting with God. And what I was doing, I was channeling the words of God. I was sharing God's word by going within. And I was a channeler. I was a medium. Every gospel, every person that spoke the word of God was channeling the words of God. And the way you do that is to get out of your mind and body. What's happened to you is that you've been so reliant on the word of a book that was given to you that you're not learning the lesson yourself. You're not going within to get the answers yourself. I needed to go on a spiritual journey. I needed to walk many lands, go across many cultures, experience new things, and go into isolation and go within to discover myself. And this is what I hope you all do. Don't rely on the words of what you're told, how to act and how to behave. Figure that out for yourself. Go within. Discover who you really are. This body you're in, the mind that you're in, is a construct. It's a collection of everything that you've been forced to learn and believe. And that's not who you are. You are not that body. You are not the mind. You are so much more. There's so much more in the potential of you. If you really want to speak and connect with God, go within. Whether that's with prayer, becoming quiet with yourself, but do not listen to the words of what other people are telling you, including the words that are coming out of here. Go within. Listen to yourself and find out for yourself what is true. And as you do that, you will discover the true meaning of spirit, of God, of channeling, and you will be channeling yourself. Any great pastor, person, priest, gospel sayer, person that's on a, a, a soapbox speaking loudly in disheveled clothes, well, that could be me. I'm connecting with God. I'm going within. And I'm sharing the words of who we are. And I really hope you do the same. And this is specifically going to just eat it, including all of us. This message is for everyone. And please listen to that message. Go within. Don't listen to the words that are written in the book. It's a guide. If you really want to find out and really want to be saved, go within. And that starts with prayer. It starts with meditation. It starts becoming silent and tuning into yourself. And I hope you consider that you do that for yourself. I really do. And speaking from, from my own self, I didn't believe in God or Jesus or anything of this for a long time. It wasn't until I went through a serious illness that I was forced to go within. And by going through and having MS, I needed to go within. I was a 6'3 black belt. I had a big business. I had a lot of things going on for myself. But all that went away. And now I use a walker. I don't necessarily leave the house all that much. But you know what a gift that is? Because it forced you, forced me to go within. And from there, like I, I just discovered so much about who I am. And I connected with God. I found it. And now I'm happy. 
So consider going within and discovering who you really are. Yeah, I really hope you do that. Just eat it. I really do. It is such a gift. Thanks for everyone for being here. So um, how this works is I have a few questions that have come in already uh, based on just research of questions that people wanted to ask. I'm going to be channeling first. If you have questions yourself, please post it in the chat and I will tune in and let's see what Jesus has to say for us. Hi, everybody. So good to see you. Thank you for being a part of this and being this. So good. Uh, yeah. All right. So since we're on this topic, Disha asks, but is witchcraft bad? Because all words are spells because everything is backed by intention. And this leads us into other questions. So when we, when we ask, is witchcraft bad? No, that's that's the label. When we hear witchcraft, now it all determines your intention. What is your intention behind what you are casting? So if this is a spell and you are casting a healthy rain. You want to have great crops for your village. You want to have all the people in the world be happy, safe, hungry. You want peace. You want love. You're passing all of the words uh, that are of a high vibration of attention that fall on the vibration of love. That's witchcraft. And that is beautiful. But if you start wishing someone else to go to hell, to experience Satan, to be killed, to suffer in any way that is a really low vibration and that is that could be considered witchcraft it's negative it doesn't matter what label you put on that's that's the thing that we've come to you've been given labels of what is good and what is bad the words and the teachings that i gave were always of love they're always of encouragement i never healed people i taught people to heal themselves and show the power within them through the words of positivity, through the words of love. And as you do that for yourself, you tune in, you, you tune into the vibration of love. You are able to create witchcraft, intentions, miracles. It's all the same thing, but a different word. So witchcraft isn't necessarily bad. It's not bad. Yeah, it, it all comes down to the intention that you have behind it. Thank you for asking that question, Disha. Uh, and you say it here. Yeah, I feel spell is another word for prayer or affirmation or even just thinking. Yeah. Yeah, it comes down to to intention. Um, Karen says, I personally think that loving Jesus would ever express something like that. He only uh, He's only love, at least to me. Yeah. So notice the words of, of that person. And they're saying it's, it's an abomination. Are those your words? Who, who told you that? Someone told you that it is an abomination. And because those words were told to you, this is part of conditioning. And this conditioning is meant to control you. If by controlling somebody through fear, that is not love. Love is by saying, I love you. I care for you. If you want to believe that, I support you and I hope you find something else. But it doesn't matter what you believe, I'm with you and I won't abandon you and I'll always love you. Those are words of love. And those are only the words that Jesus has ever spoke to me. It's the only words that I speak to myself. So consider this. The words that you are saying to yourself and really consider this. When someone tells you that mediumship, that channeling, that witchcraft is an abomination, those are words of fear, they're anger. What words do you say to yourself when you wake up in the morning? If you've been conditioned to believe in words of fear and only to believe the words that are in a book in that Bible, which is a collection of 27,000 different scripts and scrolls and pieces that were put, put together over centuries. What are the words that you're saying to yourself when you look in the mirror and you wake up in the morning? Do you say, I love you? Thank you for allowing me to be here. Good morning, God. Good morning, me. I love myself. I love you. What are your words? The intention that you have is most important. 
So if you find that you're speaking words of hate, anger, anything negative to yourself, that is part of your conditioning. It's all part of conditioning. All of it, all of it. Yeah. And we condition ourselves with the words of love by going within and knowing what love is, knowing what God is. You can find God within yourself. And I'm not a religious person. I'm not talking from a religious place. We're speaking from a place of, of knowing yourself. And if you would even consider on Sunday meditations or Sunday church, when you go to church, you go to, uh, you go to pray, go within. Don't listen to the words, feel the words, go within and feel. And if you're feeling fear, that's not love. God is only the, a vibration of love. God does not judge. If you want to, if you want to wreck yourself and create damage, okay, that's your lesson. All there's a lesson to everything and all good and all bad. Yeah. Okay, Disha, I've got you marked. Yeah, yeah, definitely, Karen. Uh, Caroline, you're right. I mean, he would never condemn something, only love from him. Yes, there's never, con condemnation is not a vibration of love. Not a vibration of love. Um, Anne says, Jesus is my main guide, so I would love to hear from you. Absolutely. I've marked you off here. I'm going to do a couple of other questions in here. Uh, that have come in that have been channeled before and we'll go through. Um, Babette says the elites use witchcraft, but have negative intentions yet. They tell us it's evil and wrong. Yeah. If, if you actually went to the Vatican and you went to their great city there and you looked at all their tools, not once do they say anything about Jesus in there and the words of Jesus, they, they have a lot of tools, tools, you know, they had this this the, the the spear and a spike on there in the end, and that like with a spiral cone type thing, and they would insert that into any hole that they could find of people, and they would move it in and out, and until they died, and they killed millions and millions of people by doing that. That is not love. That is by fear. That is fear and control. And if you don't believe me, look it up. Go look it up. Yeah. All right, Carolyn, I've got you marked. Ah, uh, Amy, I got you. Loving Amy. I got you. I got you. I got you. Beautiful. Good morning. Excellent. Thank you everyone for being a part of this. I've marked you off. I'm just going to, um, I got a couple of questions here that I just want to channel first. And the first one is, um, how can we find inner peace and harmony amidst, amidst, amidst the challenges of life? Okay, so how can we find peace and harmony given all the, the craziness in life? Well, I've, I've already said this. Go within. Turn inside. When you go within, nothing can harm you. You are within your heart and you discover that you are love. As you go within, you know, there is no low, there is nothing that can hurt you. No matter what is happening in the world, this is not meant for you but it is meant for you to observe and see the other side what i mean by the other side is when you have the feelings of fear anger hate it's to observe them you've been taught to hang on to fear you are you are born in sin that is not true you are born love a child if you look at a child you look at a baby there is absolutely no sin in a baby. Look at a baby. In the first few years, they are just nothing but laughter and, and happiness and giggling. They're just in discovery. They're in curiosity. Those are vibrations of love. And when they do cry, they are releasing energy. They're letting it go, but they're not holding on to it because five minutes later, they're playing again. They're not holding on to that pain. Although the body itself might hold on to pain, but they're not holding on to pain. And missed in all of this is to find inner peace it's, and harmony. It is for you to go within and find your love and, and observe the fear, the anger and hate and the judgment that you have in yourself. This is how you, you relieve that. The next question is, uh, can you provide guidance on how to cultivate unconditional love and compassion towards ourselves and others? Well, I, I have hinted onto this, is to observe the fear, 
is to observe the negative emotions that you have within yourself. Through observation, you are able to transmute and, and understand. Through understanding of the most heinous acts that are happening within yourself. Because as humans, we all did bad things. I did bad things as a child. I did bad things as a teenager that, may, that were considered blasphemous to the point that they put me on a cross. And to the point that they continued these teachings and the guides of, of, of goodness. And they're saying, I died for the sins. I didn't die for your sins. I, I died for my own purpose, my own discovery, my own understanding of knowing myself. Although there's a greater underlying meaning in discovery. But in this action, by being in pain on the cross, I was able to look at myself and love myself. I love the pain. This is why I did not suffer while I was on the cross, because I observed myself in the deepest pain that I was in. Consider this, if you were on the cross, what would you do? Would you relive all the negative things you did in your life and be judgmental against yourself? Or would you observe them, understand them, forgive yourself, or at least understand yourself enough to know why you did those things? Because know that you are not a bad person. You are a human. You are a soul, a spirit of universal light going through a human experience. And through that human experience, you, you have the opportunity to learn. The process of being born when you first come to this world, happy and joyful, all loving. As you get older, we become a teenager, very confused with the changes that are happening within us. We are told to suppress those feelings. You're a teenager, you're wild, suppress it, stop doing that. But that's the time to express yourself and that's the time to be guided. So yes, you need to go have fun. You need to, you need to ask the questions, discover yourself. And as you discover yourself, you then grow older. And then as an adult, you have children. You make mistakes as a child, as an, as an adult with your children. And then you become old and you are on your way to death, which isn't death. You just know that you're at, at the end of your life. That's when the old people become very much understanding and they discover who they are. They let things go. Things aren't important. They're not judgmental anymore. Let it go. And that's what I ask you to do now. So why do we have to wait until we are an elder or we are killed or something horrific happens to us? Why not forgive yourself now and allow yourself to go in peace? Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. Already talked about that one. I have one more here that I'm going to, I'm going to answer. Um, no. Okay. I won't. I'll, I'll go on. I'll go on. Okay. So last thing I'm coming to, um, someone posted it on my YouTube channel on the community wall. And let me just pull that up. And this is from Marigold and Marigold says, it may be too late, but I would like advice on how to maintain Christ consciousness in my daily life. How to be in the high loving vibration during work. Thank you. All right. How does Marigold stay in that Christ consciousness and that lovingness? Observe yourself in those moments while you're at work and you are observing you are feeling attacked. You're feeling not that you're not being heard. Observe yourself and observe the others. Notice how it's making you feel. In that feeling, as you observe the others that may be conditioning your environment, you're allowing your environment to condition you if work is getting you down. By going within and observing this and observing the others in your space, 
you may be able to get the answers that you're looking for, such as the reason why that person is making you feel small or unheard is because your ideas are really good, but they feel threatened by you. So they feel they need to reduce you to something very small. As you understand that someone might be reducing you, you realize that they are in fear. They're not doing it to be malicious towards you. They're, are, they are in fear. So they are saying things to you to make you feel small. And that is some, somebody that needs love. Because as a child, a child would do this, that they just don't understand enough that they're going to create a tantrum. They're going to do, throw a, a, a toy block at, at their sister's head because they feel that they're not being heard or understood. These are acts of a child. Any child, you know, if a child is doing this, you realize that a child is learning. So hold yourself in compassion and observe them and understand why someone is doing that to you because they're not doing it to you. They are reacting to how they're feeling because they feel that something is happening within them. They don't understand their own feelings and emotions enough. So they end up retaliating against other people in the workplace in order to make themselves justified in the feelings that they're having. Thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. So let's get over to, to your questions. You need to do a quick skim of, um, okay. So I've got grace. Got you so excited. <laughs> Felicia says, so excited for Mr. Christ. Whoop, whoop. Uh, can I have beautiful advice? Definitely. I've got you saved and be adding there. Yeah. Yeah. That's, it's not me. I'm just passing the information. Definitely passing the information. Hey, Angela, got you. I'm passing you on. And Fernanda, I've got you. All right, everybody. So I've got a few questions here and we're going to start with with Disha. Okay. Disha says, please guide me. I feel someone is either sabotaging me or keeping an eye on me. I feel weird and bad things are not, ha are not stop happening. What is happening? Please guide me. All right. She feels like she's being watched. Bad things happening. Bad things are not happening to you. Bad things are not happening to you. They're happening for you. A great shift has happened on this world, meaning the solar eclipse. This energy is meant to elevate the feelings you have within you. These feelings are brought to your intention, attention to observe them. They're not happening to you. They're happening for you. You've heard this one say enough times on how to observe your emotions. Have you done that? Have you taken a moment to quiet your mind, quiet your body? Notice where the sensations or feelings are occurring in your body and moving into that area and then asking, and observing how this area is feeling. Have you gone through that? You've heard this one speak this many times. If you've truly done that, you will understand that this is not happening to you, but happening for you. If you would consider observing this emotion through observation, you'll be able to transmute and release this into love and light. And then it'll be your choice on which energy that you want to focus on. Nothing is happening to you. I hope just in those words, you find solace that nothing is external. This is all within your control and it's a matter of you going inward. I hope you do this for yourself, Disha. Thank you for asking that question, Disha. Thank you. Uh, Anne's coming up. Anne says, Jesus is my main guide, so I would love to hear from him. Um, well, 
All right. What what does Annie do? I feel he's walking. He's walking with you. Yeah, because he is your main guide. He's definitely with you. It says you're doing really well. You're really doing really well in your day to day. Now you may get frustrated at times, especially as you're taking care of all your grandkids because it's not an easy job, but you have the wisdom and knowledge in order to guide these children in the direction they need to go. And honestly, when you're young in the, in the bodies are young and you're free spirited, that is the time to have children and babies. The elderly have the wisdom and knowledge to raise and rear the children. Your opportunity in raising these children through babysitting allows you to guide them and give them the knowledge and information they need through demonstration for them to have a fulfilling life. Know that you're being guided, you're being walked with, and your actions are being applauded by not only me, but your team and spirit uh, group around you. You're being applauded, Anne. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Okay, let's come to the next one. Loretta says, hi, I'd love a message from Master Jesus. All right, what does Loretta need here? You're being thanked for representing the animals. Thank you for healing the animals that are the ones providing a buffer to the human experience. By providing a buffer, the animals uh, transmute emotions and provide healing. Every time you squeeze and hold your dog or you pet your cat, there's, there's protection, there's love, and you're generating love. Thank you for healing the animals and showing them that they have someone else that is loving them additional to the people they've chosen to to walk with there's a butt coming in here so i'm just tuning into the butt the love that you have for animals could you not provide that love that same level of love to yourself could you not Treat yourself the way you treat the animals. Because you're quite hard on yourself. You take on a lot of the, the emotions and the troubles and you hang on to a lot of your past. Past relationships, past, past experiences that have left a bad taste in your mouth and they've, they've stuck with you. When you are healing an animal, you are healing them through your love unconditional love my hopes is that you have that same consideration for yourself that you love yourself with the same level of loving an animal the next time you speak to yourself pet your body as you would an animal because your body is an animal you are in that animal body the body is not who you are the mind is not who you are you are a soul something greater than this, an all-knowing intelligence that is encased in a lot of this so that we forget it. But you're really not encased inside. You feel like you're inside it, but you're not. The soul is outside of the body. Until you develop enough awareness, you'll know this. But consider taking care, speaking to yourself as you do your animals and notice what happens. And, and as Khan speak, come back and share your experience, as you speak to yourself, as you, as you speak to an animal, as you would an animal, let me know what happens for you. And, and even do that now. I'd, lo I'd love to hear 
what your experience is if, if you do that now for yourself. Yeah, very much so. Love it, love it. You're welcome, man. Uh, yes, good. Okay, I've got you added to the group. I, I can't speak Russian, so uh, I don't know how to pronounce your name, but I've got you. Um, Carolyn says, question. Just today, I asked Yeshua to be my spiritual team manager. I feel I've been too much all over the place. Is he up for that task? Can he help me going back to basics? Are you willing to do that? Of course I'm willing to do that. I'm with you. I'm with all of you. You simply have to ask. And you've taken the hardest step that the majority have not done. And that is ask. Thank you for asking because I've been waiting. I've been waiting for you to ask. I am most honored to take the position of be, being your spiritual manager. You will receive the cues and the ideas and suggestions to lead the life that will hold you on the path of spirituality, of your own inner discovery. Yes, I am more than happy and honored, and I will. And it feels like he's saying, I will continue to do that. He's been doing it, but in a way that when you haven't been asked permission to do it, you haven't been asked to do it. Although I feel you've asked already. You've asked, but maybe not as specifically because your awareness and understanding wasn't as developed as it is now. Because you're so much spiritually more open now, you understand with spirits, you've allowed more in, you've forgiven much more. Uh, you're in a better position with a different, a different vibration of intention by asking those words. And he says the vibration of intention is extremely important but I leave that for another day. Wonderful. Thank you. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, I got you love. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to answer you now. I see that L Loretta, you're, you're welcome. Love. You're welcome. Okay. Um, sorry. I don't know how to pronounce your name. If you want add your, add a name that maybe I can pronounce at the end, but I don't, it's not necessary. Hello, Khan. I would like to know how to heal my heart chakra, for, um, my emotions, also a message from Jesus for me. Okay, how does she heal her heart chakra? If you're willing, take a moment with me. Take your dominant hand and put it over your heart. Breathe and feel your heart. Feel the space in and around your heart and breathe and feel the space. As you breathe in and out of your heart, say, I love you. I may not understand you, but I'm willing to love you. Even though, even though I have not connected with you, in the level I need to, I'm willing to connect with you now. I'm willing to hold you while you beat, while you function. Connect with your heart, breathe and feel, and, and let me know what your experience is so that others can, can feel and learn from this as well. Thank you, George. George, yes. So feel, feel your heart. Breathe and feel. Just put your dominant hand over your heart and just feel either your, your energetic heart chakra. doesn't necessarily either your physical heart or your heart chakra. It's the same. My hand is kind of sitting on both right now. And breathe and feel and begin to speak to yourself. You may even consider joining us on the, the Sunday meditations that, that is happening every Sunday. In those meditations we will be guided by the ascended masters by developing awareness becoming more sensitive and healing our our heart chakras our, our entire system and dealing with the emotions that are are weighing us down but consider doing what you did and then share your experience george yeah please do please do thanks for asking that question george okay i am coming to amy
Amy says, I'm feeling a little lost and doubting my path since the eclipse. Lots of negative people around me, and I would love any advice that wants to come through. All right, what does uh, what does Amy need to hear? What do you need to say? First thing I heard was stop that. Amy, you're you're one of the, the few people that know the truth. You're one of the few people that know who you are. And it's not necessary for you to have these thoughts towards yourself. But I will give you something that was shared with this one through Bashar. Identify the feeling. I, I am feeling I am doubting my path because I choose to believe so. I am feeling negativity of people around me. I'm feeling the negativity because I choose to believe that's what defines me. By speaking these words and acknowledging the feelings that you have in your body, you are creating a, an initial connection, but the connection is not complete until you give it an understanding. Give it the by, uh, by understanding because you, you, you choose to believe so, or you feel it's what you are, it's, you, that you must. Considering 90 to 95% of your thoughts are not your own. This is all conditioning. This is on thoughts that have been made you feel a certain way, but these are not the thoughts of who you are. You're choosing to believe these thoughts are yours, but they're not. As you say this, you'll begin to feel a certain connection. And now do this now. I am feeling and identify the fear, fill in the blank, because I choose to fill in the blank. I believe it. I think I must. As you do that, notice how you, you feel in your body. You might feel a slight little shift that it's not as heavy as it is. As you continue to do that, you'll begin to raise your vibrations enough so to get you to a point that you'll begin to tune into yourself again. Because in the state you, you're in right now, that low vibrational state, you're not in a loving state that you can nurture the emotions that you're feeling in your body. By beginning to acknowledge the feeling and then completing the feeling by speaking to it, because I choose to believe to you, because I must, you're now giving a reason and that child energy of feeling within you is being heard and it feels a little better, just a fraction better. As you repeat that, every time you feel it, acknowledge it because I must, because I do. So the, it goes with, I am feeling fill in the blank because I choose to believe fill in the blank. As you do that, notice what happens to you and repeat that and report back to us. Yeah. Consider the, consider the shift. George is saying, thank you for sure. Get me closer to my heart. And George, when you do that, when you get to your heart, how does your heart respond to you as you breathe and connect and say, I love you, I will not abandon you? How does your heart respond to you? How does it feel? Let me know. And says, thank you for channeling Jesus for me. The supporting message from him give me hope and strength and gratefulness to go forward with my life journey and with trust and love. Good, good. And if all of you are willing to share your experience, know that this isn't anything magical. This is something that we all have within us. As we begin to observe the emotions and the feelings that we have within us, we get to clear that space. We get to acknowledge it. And by acknowledge it, you, you end up creating room. You let go of clutter. You let go of stinking thinking. You let go of things that are, are holding you back. That's filling up your space. You know, every, every, you have a brand new, wonderful summer day. It's time to, to get new clothes. But before you get new clothes, you need to clear your closet. 
In order to clean your closet, you need to look at the clothes that are in your closet and say, I don't need this. I don't need this. I'm going to donate this. I'm going to give this away. Uh, no longer. But you need to observe the clothes in your closet in order to get rid of them. Consider doing this with your emotions. Observe the emotions in your body to clear your spiritual and energetic closet so you can allow more love in, to bring in more of what you want in your life. And that is love. That's happiness. That's joy. That's freedom. Elevate your soul. It's not about bringing more fear in or guilt or shame. Those are feelings that don't make you feel good. And that's what creates problems for us. Let go of that. Bring in love. Bring in love. That's the only vibration. And if you choose to harness that vibration, the only messages that you are going to channel, you're going to have for yourself, are on the vibration of love. And that takes practice. That takes practice. Come to the loving grace here. Hi, Grace. Jesus, do you still a soul family that you hang around or help? You are all my soul family. Don't you realize this? The greatest lesson in learning is that we are all one. We are one giant soul family. We are part of the same energetic field. Anytime I'm looking over all of you. Now, the work that I do isn't just on Earth. It's multidimensional now. I've moved... Not only am I working with the earth, I'm also working with other planets, other dimensions, other realities, other personalities in order to convey the message for, for the highest and greatest good of all, all beings. Earth isn't the only being there. Those are just suits. They're actor suits. The energy behind it, the soul, the spirit of universal light which is all of us, that one light, if you cast a flashlight and each of you held a flashlight in your hand and you all pointed it to the same spot on the wall, isn't that one light? There is no difference between every, every beam. Yes, there is a sense of separateness, yet we are all one. As you are all the flashlight beaming out of the same place, we are all one. So yes, I am with all of all beings at once as i hold the vibration of love for all of you thank you for asking that question grace thank you thank you jesus that was beautiful all right let's come to felicia um felicia says can i have a any beautiful advice for my beautiful soul brother mr christ for me and my daughter all right. What does Felicia need to hear for her brother, herself, and her daughter? Notice what happens when you've you've said the words of your brother, yourself, and your daughter. You've brought them all in together as one, a, a unified energy. If you consider to allow yourself to feel the energy that bonds you, that love that bonds you, you will find the answers that you need. Although I know the answer you want is something more specific, which I will give you. I wish for you to hold on to this initial thought as I share the rest of the message for you. For yourself, first and foremost, you, as you've written it, and as you know, you are in the middle. You've said my, a message for my beautiful brother, for me and my daughter. You are in the middle. You are the energetic bond between all three of you. As you tune into your own self, as you hold in your higher vibration for your own self and you heal your own moods, wounds, you will heal your trinity of three, your soul brother, yourself, and your daughter. Your daughter is the one that is on a path of 
most volatility right now. She's unsure of herself. She's at an age of needing to become an adult, needing to become independent, needing to know who she is. So the decisions that she makes, she feels she's making those decisions from a place of adulthood. But she doesn't have all the information. She doesn't have all the knowledge. The benefit that you have is that you have had similar experiences to her. In those experiences, you've learned. You've learned where to be careful. You've learned where to place your step on a volatile floor that might fall beneath you. So as she is walking, every step is falling through the floor. And maybe one step has, has a solid surface to hold onto. For yourself, you've gone through that floor once before. And you were able to guide her and tell her, don't step there. Try another step. I fell through that step. You might want to consider a different step. This is your opportunity to share your experiences with her and to be open and honest with her. For her own self, she feels that she is being treated as a child because she is a child, but she doesn't realize that she has, her desire is to be an adult. The reason why she has a desire to be an adult is because she no longer wants to feel these feelings. And her misconception is that when I become an adult, I don't need to feel this way. What she doesn't understand is that we're constantly always learning. Becoming an adult isn't the solution to our problems. Even as you see your leaders who haven't dealt with their own issues, uh, cast their problems and their ideologies onto others, Without the information, they're children running the country. And you can see how the world is, is changing. Well, as you have gone through those experiences, you can share your experiences with your daughter and allow her to make those decisions. When you speak to her, speak to her from as a point, as a, as a person, as being honest. You don't have to shield anything of what you went through. Share your experiences openly and honestly. For your brother, your brother wants to protect you to hold you, to be, to be in a place of that male energy is that protection. Whatever you believe, this is how, how the male energy within this one, your brother is feeling. He wants to feel valued, not as a child being told that he can't do anything. Allow your brother to do things that will prove that he is the masculine energy that he is a provider, he is supportive, that he can protect. Give him the opportunity and the space to do that without saying, don't worry, you don't need to do that, I'm okay. He wants to be able to help. Give him the opportunity to, to help you. As you allow the help from one end and you guide and provide the help on another, you allow that flow of energy to go through you and you will, you will attain the balance of divine feminine and masculine energy in giving and receiving allow yourself to give and receive without abusing and you will allow to um, find the balance within you that is your message Ooh. did i i hope you listen to to that message fully because there's a lot of power in that message. That was really a really strong message in giving and receiving in order to find the balance of divine feminine and masculine energy within you. And that's a message for all of us. Wow, I love that. That's wonderful. Okay. So Angela says, hello, Khan, everyone. Hi, Angela. I thought about you so much over the past year. Uh, I'm so glad to see your name here, Angela. Uh, I'd love a message guidance from Yeshua regarding my current career transition and path going forward. Thank you so much. The first thing I heard was like, you're doing it. There's an excitement there. And I'm... All right, what, what, what is the message? Yes, keep going forward. Keep allowing yourself... To follow the guidance that you feel within you. So for some time, you've been feeling uneasy about your job, uncomfortable in the work that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. 
and you thought about what would I like to do in my life? And you would have made those opportunities and transitions, but the fear within yourself was holding you back. The fear prevented you from jumping in with both feet, quitting your job completely and moving forward. Regardless of the decisions that you make, everything is going to be fine. You're in a position that you're not going to have financial difficulties. You're going to be comfortable. You're going to be taken care of. And you've worked on yourself enough that you're beginning to know that having a lot of money isn't, isn't necessary. Having a lot of money is conditioning and say you need to work hard and have a house and have this and have that and to show that you have wealth and that's when you're going to be happy and you attained those things, but you're not happy. And in that, through your own self-discovery, you realize I don't need these things. I don't need to have the fancy clothes and the jewelry and the cars. It gives me a moment of happiness, but that happiness is external. To find the true happiness is within myself. As I tune within myself, I realize I don't need these external things to make me happy. As you're transitioning into your job, you are feeling and seeing that I don't need this job to make me happy because what was I was receiving from the job was just money. It wasn't giving me satisfaction or joy. As I think about the work that I can do, it's not going to give me the money. It's going to be quite less, but I will be happy. In that transition, let go of the fear and allow yourself to feel the feelings of the change and joy that you'll be experiencing. Allow yourself to observe the fear, let that go, and tune into the joy part. As you need to make a decision, as an opportunity comes in front of you, you're either going to get really excited at the start, or it's going to, you're going to feel a bit of a pullback and say, no, this doesn't feel good. Every time you feel excited, you're going to follow that excitement. Because right after that excitement is going to be your, your inner voice saying, no, 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 that's not it. You're crazy. You, that's the part you want to let go and hold on to the, the joyful voice of love. The path is following the joyful words and the joyful inner voice that says, this is the things you want to do. Your transition is going to be going to be quite wonderful for you. Allow yourself to have the transition and you will have all of your desires fulfilled, which is joy and happiness. Follow your path. You're doing great. You're doing great. I'm very proud of you for making that transition. And not only is that coming from Jesus, it's coming from me. I'm very proud of you. That's that's wonderful, Angela. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. The last question I have here is for Fernanda. Given that this is the last question, if I've missed you, please let me know and, and preferably repost it because I won't be able to find it. So this last question is for Fernanda. And just post the last question if you need to. Um, Fernanda says, question, how can I remember my Essene knowledge and integrate into this life? Thank you. Uh, how can she remember her Essene knowledge? Well, first, each and every one of you is an all-knowing intelligence. All the information is there, if you allow it. You're already on your process in, in going through and allowing in understanding this information. How could you specifically find the information? Through meditation. The next time you meditate, actually do this now with me, Fernanda, if you're able to and if you're willing. Again, put your hand on your heart. Breathe and feel in your heart. And allow your breath to quiet your mind. Continue to keep your focus on your heart and your breath as you breathe in and you breathe out. Feel the breath, how it brushes against the walls of your heart and allow it to move in and through and around your heart and feel your heart. As you quiet your mind and your body, move yourself into the middle of your heart and allow yourself to sit in the center of your heart. Begin to call in the energy of the Essene. Allow the energy of the Essene to surround you and fill the space around you within your heart. 
as you sit in silence, sit as a student and ask the question, what do I need to know? And then sit and wait. What do I need to hear? Sit and wait. What do I need to see? Sit and wait. And what do I need to feel? Sit and wait. Repeat those words, saying each sentence one after another. What do I need to know? What do I need to hear? What do I need to see? What do I need to feel? You may even consider adding on from all dimensions, all timelines. And then wait and listen. Do that continually. First, get your body and mind quiet like we do in our Sunday meditations. Then sit within yourself and ask that question. And let me know. If you've tried it right now and you're still here, let me know how that worked out for you. Yes. So I, I put this out to all of you. If you're looking for an answer within yourself, become quiet with yourself by following your breath, tuning into yourself and breathing and feeling. As you get your mind and body extremely still and quiet, ask those questions. What do I need to know? Wait. What do I need to hear? What do I need to see? And what do I need to feel? Across all timelines and dimensions. And then wait. And then repeat that. As you become familiar with the energy in the space of becoming quiet, those answers will come in for you. Because notice, as you say, what do I need to know? What do I need to hear, see, and feel? You are touching on your four clairs. Clairsentience, clairaudience, clairvoyance, and uh, claircognizance. So each one of those, you are uh, knowing, hearing, seeing, feeling. Claircognizance, clairaudience, clairvoyance, clairsentience. And those are our four clairs, and that's what we want to develop to get all the answers and questions that we need to hear. Wonderful. Ah, wonderful. Good. Okay, so I'm just reading this. Uh, Anne, you're welcome from the trust and love. Beautiful. Uh, Amy, thank you so much. I'm usually so good at trying to protect my energy, but just sunk at this time for some reason. Yeah, I just went through this, Amy. I was in a funk for at least four or five months. Although every time I tuned in, I was doing the meditations for our, gr or our group meditations. I was tuning into spirit. I'm channeling. I was moving into love in that moment. But as I ended out of the meditations, I was moving back into that funk, especially as the MS in my body was bringing me back into the body mind feeling. I was getting really low and really quiet and really uh, thinking, oh, this is it. My body's getting worse. I got into a really low funk. And then I heard somebody send me, sent me a small clip from Bashara that was what I said to you. Uh, in that moment, I am feeling blank and acknowledge it because I choose to believe blank and acknowledge it. And by doing that over the course of a week, uh, I, I didn't need to do it as much. Into the second week, I realized, oh, I don't need to do this anymore. I did it once in the second week when it came up. And it was at that point, I felt really good about myself that I completed the circuitry enough that I was then able to do the greater work. And that's diving deep into the emotion. It's like, okay, where am I feeling that in my body and moving to that place in my body and then sitting and observing with it and then transmuting it, giving it love, giving it understanding. And then my energy skyrocketed. I opened up. I had a Kundalini awakening for like the second, third time in my life. 
and all the downloads came in, all the information came in. I just saw, I heard, I felt, I knew everything I needed to know. It all came together. So I'm really happy for you. And I, I really want to know how that turns out for you. Circle back and let me know. Uh, Carolyn, yes, you're welcome. Yes. Um, thank you, Connie Yeshua. He will continue to be my manager. Absolutely. He loves you, Carolyn. Hi, Luz. Oh, Luz. I love you so much. Luz has been with me since uh, the first time I began channeling Eric, like three, four years ago. Uh, I really am grateful for you, Luz, for your support. Uh, yes. Yeah, there's a lot of good messages. If you consider listening to all the messages in here, there's something really profound and great in all of these messages. It, it is all wonderful. Yeah. Um, but love the last message. Yeah. The knowing, the feeling, the hearing, the sensing. It was William Michael Forbes uh, that did that. Now, if, if anybody wants to learn how to meditate and connect with themselves and really understand, go check out William Michael Forbes. Uh, not only is he, he is, he is such a clear channel. Here's his website. Go check out William Michael Forbes. He is such a clear channel and his intention. I know William personally outside of the courses. I know him and Norma, his wife, and they are such beautiful people. And they've just gone to Mexico over the, the winter holidays. They're there and they're going to be coming back in a couple of weeks in, back into Canada. They have opened up so much that the teachings are so profound. And when I was in my funk, I, I truthfully, I felt a little bit of resentment to that. And now as I had my my third awakening, it's like, uh, I, it's it's not for me to be threatened by any of this, it's to actually, to move back into love and share the message. And it's why I'm back on YouTube. It's why I'm doing these love things. Because I really just want everyone to feel love and know who you really are. All of you are wonderful, beautiful beings, and I really hope you remember who you really are. I really do. Um, good, Fernanda. Keep going within. Keep going. Uh, I want it. I want to hear that. Yeah, I, I love it. Good. Thank you. I'm glad you like the lives. So um, this Sunday, the the other live I'm doing is is every Sunday uh, at 10 a.m. Eastern on this channel. I am channeling the a meditation from the Ascended Masters. This Sunday, we're going back to the basics of developing awareness. When you develop awareness, that very base foundation, and you remember who you are, this process is quieting the mind and body, and then knowing who you really are. And then once you know and you have that sensitivity, you're able to go into the body, you're going to go into various areas within you, and now begin to transmute emotions, let things go. As you let things go, you can bring things in, which is love. And then we create, we can create everything that we need. So I'm bringing this to YouTube every Sunday, 10 a.m. Eastern, be there. If you want something more formal, during the week, I have the Enlightened Mastery Meditation Group three times a week on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. We have a meditation where you just come in and you meditate. No talking, no speaking, no nothing. You just come in and meditate. And it's, it's, it's a meditation gym to keep you on track. And the Ascended Masters just open us up into, into what we need to know. So consider joining us for this, this week. Is there anything else? That's it. Last but not least, uh, Rachel Swan and myself, I am live streaming right now on Con Night and also Intuitive Soul Rising with my partner, um, my friend, business partner, Intuitive Soul Rising, Rachel Swanee. And we are announcing the 102 course. It's happening on May 4th. And it is, um, it, the registration is going to open this week. So May 4th, the 102 that we are teaching to open up your spirituality and your mediumship. And the 102 is going to be good. You're taking everything from the 101, which is the basics, to open up your energy. A lot of people had had really good experiences. One person had a Kundalini awakening. We're taking that energy and we're going to continue it and really move into the higher vibrations. I only allow love to enter this space and I only allow love to leave this space. We only allow the highest vibrations to work on it. So in the first 101, it's all about protection, about opening ourselves up. Now we are open, we're love, and we're really going to catapult into expanding our that higher vibrations. 
So thank you all for being a part of this community. I'll be back next Friday for the next channel. And if you know any medium that would like to join me on the Channeling Fridays, please reach out to them. Reach out to me. And I would love to have them on here. If you're a medium and you want to be part of this, join me every Friday at 12 noon. I'm, I welcome other mediums, other psychics, anyone else that wants to come in and practice or even just talk. All welcome. Let's come in here every every Friday at 12 noon. And every Sunday is meditations uh, all free on this channel at Con Night. And, uh, and the Friday is on to the soul rising. So with that, I'll see you next week. And, or I'll see you on Sunday. And I love you all. Much love, everybody. I'll see you soon. Bye.